Hello and welcome back to my craft room. Well, it's been ooh, a couple of weeks now since I got my second Uwe box from Johnny, my friend Johnny here on YouTube, Just Johnny Creations. We're doing a bi-monthly mystery box full of arts and craft supplies. Well, craft supplies, really. Um, but the ones Johnny sent me this time are more art and craft, really. So what Johnny sent me was um, everything I needed to have a go at making my own watercolour paints. And I did mix up, I'm going to go straight to my desk now. When I first got it, I did mix up just the three, he sent me these three pigments. I'll link to the first video in the description box. Um, so I thought I'll just mix up those three pigments as they are with the gum arabic that he also sent me um, and I used a little bit of honey because I heard that that helps to stop it sort of drying out and cracking and it helps to sort of improve the flow um, and I, I believe this is like over well over a week ago and it's still sticky it's, it's not going to set and um, Adorn another friend of mine here on YouTube that one set a bit harder um, who Dawn made by Dawn23 here on YouTube. Um, she knows what she's doing with making watercolour paints, <laughs> and she told me I put way, way, way too much honey. So, um, I'm gonna just out of curiosity, I'm gonna see if these will paint, but then I'm gonna mix up some more. And I'm gonna, I've, I've looked up a couple of recipes and stuff. It seems a little bit hit and miss. There are hit and miss, there are lots of different ingredients mentioned things like ox gall which dawn tells me helps to improve the flow of the paint um some recipes call for honey and glycerin some say honey or glycerin yeah there are lots of different things and apparently it depends on the pigment how much the ratio of binder to pigment depends upon the pigment so it means a lot of experimenting i'm not really sure how much time i want to spend experimenting with that so i'm just gonna I'm just going to go for it. I've got a couple extra bits. So since then, I've got this little pot here ready to mix up. I'm going to do a mixture of the gum arabic. So it's not the powdered one. It's, it's the liquid one that Johnny sent me. Um, along with, now I was going to put some honey in. And last time I had some kind of dip, I used this honey, which is kind of quite solid. But as it happens, I've just had a parcel from Beebing where she sent me some... Um, subscription art supply boxes and uh, one of them had this honey in as the kind of you know the gift the little you know they put little freebies in sometimes and it's quite um, it's probably a waste of it really because it's organic wild wildflower honey but I'll taste it as well um, but it's nice and runny so I think it'll mix in easier so I'm going to use that and I also went and bought myself some clove oil it's pretty cheap I've got it on Amazon because that's supposed to help as a preservative just a, a drop or two so what i'm going to do this time is mix up some of the gum arabic the honey and a couple of drops of clove oil in there to make my binder and then it's basically one part binder to one part pigment according to the recipe i'm kind of following but that will vary a little bit depending on the pigment so I'm really hoping I can have some fun now mixing up colours and things. Oh, look, it does work. Um, one of the things I read, I've not got a bad, you know, that 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 kind of ratio of uh, pigment isn't isn't bad. I mean, I, I've got I'm getting quite a nice intensity of colour there. One of the things I read, and I won't know this until it dries now, is that um, if you haven't got the right amount of binder or if you've not worked them together it well enough once it's dry if you rub over the surface the color will come off which you don't want you want it i suppose that's what the binder does is it kind of binds it to the paper yeah i mean in terms of the color i'm getting that's lovely I mean, it's not set hard but that's not really a problem it doesn't mean they're not usable so each of these i didn't mix anything else with them they were just the the colors as they came quite happy with that i'm gonna let them dry and then in a minute i'm gonna see if they stay put when they're dry so i'm gonna call that two parts so i want seven parts of this one two three four five six seven 
Right, I'm going to stir that in and at the same time I'm going to stir in a couple of drops of this clove oil which is supposed to help to preserve it. So then I'm supposed to use equal parts of this binder that I've mixed up and the colour. So let's try let's try mixing up a green this time, shall we? I haven't got so much of the yellow, so I'm a bit kind of ooh, being a bit precious about it really. Um let's let's mix I've got quite a lot of the blue, quite a lot of the red, but not a lot of yellow left. Let's make a purple. <laughs> so I want kind of equal amounts of the pigment and the binder. It smells lovely in here. And I do about equal amounts of that red and blue as well, but I might have to change that in a minute. It looks like there's these kind of granules in it, but they're not gritty. They, if if you squeeze them between your finger and thumb, they uh, they're just powdery. Somebody said in the comments I should be more careful with these um, because two of these are that's cadmium red, and it was and cadmium yellow pale as well. Be careful, especially with the with the cadmium ones. I should be wearing gloves. I hate wearing gloves, and at the moment I'm not really touching it with my hand, so I'm not going to worry. To be fair, when I first opened them, I did dip my finger straight in the cadmium yellow. So, yeah, that's probably a bad idea. So let's scoop this all together. I'm going to aim for about the same amount of binder as I have pigment, I think. And then once I've got my paints ready to go, I've got a challenge. Oh, now that's gone really horrid. Why is it doing that? Why is it going that weird colour? Well, it's not horrid actually it's quite a nice color but why is is it because the of that is such a so the gum, uh, gum arabic as it was is quite not clear but very pale yellowy color whereas that because i put that dark color honey in is it that is it the color of that that's oh dear i'm not doing very well am i and then dawn said i should use like a flat surface to really work all this in together I'm doing just such tiny amounts. Well, that is not the colour I was expecting. That's made a kind of a really quite nice, but like a, what would you call that? Maybe a burnt sienna? It's actually quite a nice colour, but it, it's not it's not what I was after. But that's fine. That's fine. And last time I tried using this little thing on my, on my glass mat just to help with the body. But I think I'm just going to go with just this palette knife. Because some of the instructions that I've seen, that is all they use. And I really am doing just such a small amount. Very keen to see. Let's see if this has dried this. I swatched. The blue hasn't yet, but the red has. Let's see if... Well, it's not quite dry. It's not coming off or anything, which means it is... You know, presumably that means the binder's working. It's sticking to the paper. Nothing's coming off. Now, Johnny put in some of these larger ones and some of these, some of these half pans. Um... I haven't made enough here to fill a large one so I'm going to put this in a half pan. Surprising colour to come out of them. I can't believe that's only down to this having some brown in it. I think maybe I need a lot more blue against the red but let's I'm, I'm keen to have some of this colour so uh, let's put it in a pan anyway and then I might just try mixing some more blue into it. I don't know if this is something that I would really get into doing it's it's quite a messy and it's it's quite unpredictable I kind of feel like I don't really know what I'm doing I suppose and I don't know if I'm keen enough to want to watch hours and hours of videos and really if you're going to do it properly you should do a lot of experimenting keep careful note of what quantities you're using I don't know if I'm keen enough to do all that I'm a bit lazy okay what I'm going to do I think then is try this time putting a lot less red and more blue. Once I've got my paints ready to go, the prompt that Johnny gave me for this month was splatter, which is perfect, isn't it? Let's do a lot more blue this time. It's very difficult to know how much binder you need. I mean, yeah, uh, the recipe I'm sort of following says one part pigment to one part binder. Obviously, if it's really stiff, like at the moment, this is making me feel like oh, you maybe need some more a binder oh look this is unexpected again look at that so I've put a lot more blue in this time and um, and instead of going more purple it's just done this really 
Oh, I mean, I like it. It's like a, it's something between a, a kind of a bitter chocolate and an aubergine. <laughs> yeah, not at all. I was expecting it'd be interesting to see how it swatches when it's dry. Because I never, because I, I am too lazy to have bothered keeping note of what I've done, I will never be able to mix these colours again. So if I end up mixing some colour that I think is absolutely gorgeous and I want it again, no, it's going to be tough luck. And what Johnny did was mix all of his straight in the pan. And that's where he put me in this little tool, his little cute with the crystal on, because that was good for getting into the corners. Um, but from what I've been reading, you really need to kind of work this quite well to make sure the binder's all thoroughly worked in. Oh, smelling here. The Ua box that I sent to Johnny was all about weaving. I sent him a mini loom. It was just aimed at kids and beginners with some with a video to go and watch which shows you how to kind of customise it to make it um, sort of more functional. Um, I had I did get myself the same uh, weaving, uh, same uh, loom and stuff. I put together basically the same kit for me as I did for Johnny and had to go myself. It was really quite fun. I don't know how well um, Johnny's getting on though because he's had a bad, he's had a... Um, like an elbow injury so he hasn't been able to do anything recently which is must be so frustrating so i don't know when his next video is likely to be coming out his prompt was to make an irresistible cat toy for ziggy um okay so that's a couple of quite interesting i would say that's like a burnt umber and a raw sienna <laughs> i've kind of made there without without meaning to i'm interested to know if i did the same colors but with with the unadulterated um, gum arabic, would it? I don't think that's enough to make it that brown. I think it must be, if you wanted to get good purple, you'd need a different blue and a different red. I, I don't know. Well, I want to try and get um, green and an orange, and I've not got a lot of the yellow. So I'm going to do that next, I think. Let's put the yellow down first, and then just a tiny bit of the blue. I can mix in more if I need it. Well, I'm just going to put in a tiny bit like that first see how it goes can't really tell till it starts getting wet mm, it's hard to tell what's going to happen there okay i'm gonna have to put the binder in i think oh pretty yeah so that reassures me then that the color of the binder isn't affecting the paint too too much because that's not gone all brown has it it's a nice well actually on the camera it looks a bit ugh, but here it's a nice clear kind of I'd call that a lime green, I think. Obviously, just that cad cadmium red and ultramarine blue do not make purple. But they do make a lovely <laughs> raw sienna and burnt umber or something. That's a lovely green, actually. It really doesn't look it on camera, but it is a lovely limey green. I like that. Oh, it's such a delicious green. Doing such tiny quantities like this, it is quite wasteful. You lose a bit on the board. It's quite hard to really get... You know, when you watch people doing it who, who do it properly, they've got a huge board this size and they've got the whole lot covered with paint and they scoop it all up. I've got so little, it's almost... <laughs> There's going to be more stuck on the board than there is going in the pan. You know, even if these aren't perfect watercolour paints, they are just for me to have fun with and I will definitely have fun with them. Even though I can see there's a bit of unmixed pigment gone in there. That's fine. It might have an unexpected effect. That's also fine. Okay, I think what I want to do now is just try making a bluer green. I just want to do like an orangey colour now and then I've kind of got to as much of the rainbow as I can get. <laughs> and the other colours I can mix up, you know, with the, with the paints like in the normal way. So I just need a little bit of space here to do some... I might as well use these ones that haven't set properly. It doesn't matter, they still work, so I'm still going to use them. So I've got two shades of green. I've got red, yellow and blue. I've got those brownie colours, but that one might turn out to be purple. <laughs> I want an orange now. Uh, again, I kind of feel like I need more of a yellow, but this is what I've got, so let's go with it. I know I'm not doing all the proper mulling and everything, but... I didn't do the proper mulling and everything with those and it seems to have worked fine so I'm not going to worry about it. Let's just hope that I, I would like for them to set up properly this time 
but to be honest if they don't it will just be like having those what are those um squidgy jelly gouache won't it i'll just call them jelly watercolors and pretend i did it on purpose <laughs> maybe that's what they did maybe it was an accidental discovery i mean it will make it easier to kind of wake them up won't it when you're ready to start painting i'm quite pleased with that little palette i think that will give me enough to um have a go at the challenge that uh, that Johnny sent me, Splatter. I will be back again in a couple of days. If those aren't quite set, I'll just um, I'll use them as they are and just uh, see how we do with them. And um, but hopefully they will. Been a lot of fun though. And um, I haven't what I haven't tried yet at all is mixing any kind of mica powders or anything like that in. So I'll see how these go. I've still got plenty to play with. Certainly plenty of the blue and the red. Not so much of the yellow. Um, they're not terrifically expensive well some of the pigments are more than others but yeah i might have a look at getting a few more pigments i'm quite enjoying doing it if this works and i haven't got to do all the science bit definitely i would do it again i'll see you again in a couple of days for the next thrilling installment it's the next day my paints have already dried out so clearly <laughs> these ones that are still sticky it was just down to there being too much honey in them but i can still use them so this is what these are looking like. They have all cracked though, which makes me think I maybe needed a bit more of the binder. You know, one of the other ingredients that people put in. But, you know, I think that they're still going to work. It's fine. I don't think this is something that I'm ever going to kind of take too seriously or, or do too much more of it. You know, I, I don't, I'm not going to sort of worry about it too much. I'm also going to, because um, I know Johnny was experimenting with some um, metallic pigments in the watercolours he was making, but um, I, I haven't got any metallic pigment. I did think I could try putting some mica powders in, but I got this for my birthday. One of my birthday presents from Claire. Thank you, Claire. <laughs> was this gorgeous, I kept it in the box because it was so sweet, little tin box of um, watercolours with handmade honey watercolour. This is what they should look like, I guess. <laughs> and these have got beautiful metallic effects. So I think I might try at least one of these. At the moment, I've just left them in there because they look so cute, but I must use them. Um, so I think this is a good time to try them out. It's nice that they come with the magnetic strips as well so that you can set them out in your tin. So yeah, it's probably a good time to swatch these as well and uh, maybe pick a couple to use for my watercolour doodle. Golden copper, gold pearl, crystal silver, red brown, inca gold, and chocolate green, which sounds really weird, but when you change so can you see it changes from green to copper to, to like chocolate brown, green brown, green. Let's watch my handmade watercolours first. Yes, I did these yesterday, and although they've stayed sticky, they haven't dried up, they did they work perfectly fine. And um, the binders obviously worked in well enough because no trace of colour is coming off, it's all perfectly well bound to the paper. And when I did these yesterday, there was still like a little sticky patch around, but that's finally dried. There's a bit of a shine to it. I wonder if that is because of the honey. <laughs> Too much honey. <laughs> Doesn't feel sticky now though. So let's try those. Here's the little brush that Johnny sent in the in the Uwer box. This is where we find out if they've worked or not and how difficult they're going to be to, to reactivate. So if I was using a normal set of watercolours I'd probably spritz these from my water bottle. Right so this is the orange that I mixed up. Nice. Yeah, quite happy with that. Good, good, good. Now there are a couple of strange ones there that I've left. I'll, I'll leave them to last. I'll tell you why in a minute. Well, you'll probably remember because it's not that long since you <laughs> since you watched me mix them up. Yeah, that's a pretty green. You down a little bit. Oh, nice. Very happy with these colours. So I've got the two shades of green, the orange, the primary colours I've already done. And then with these, I tried to mix a purple and they just looked like brown when I'm. This one particularly just looks like a, I don't know, like a, a burnt sienna or something. So I'm interested to see. Then I tried putting more 
blue to red in and that as it's it did look like a dark brown but you can see as it's dried it does look more purple so i'm very excited to see how they come out when i swatch them let's go for this one first this is one that had more of the red in yeah so it's not a purple at all but it's a really nice kind of what would you call that um yeah, burnt sienna, I think. Kind of. Yeah. It's a nice colour. Not what I intended. This one definitely looks more purple, so let's see. They're certainly activating again nice and easily. Ooh, love this. It's almost... Um, it, it is purplish, but it's almost a Payne's Grey, which is one of my favourite colours. I love that. So I think for my doodle piece, I'm not going to just use all of the colours, which I have a tendency to do. I think what I'm going to do is use that lovely purplish Payne's Grey kind of colour. Blue, yellow and the greens. And I'm going to leave the reddish toned ones out. So I'm just going to go with those. That, that will be kind of more, more harmonious for, for what I want. And then I'm going to pick some of these metallic paints as well. Let's try them all anyway. I hate unwrapping them. They look so cute. <laughs> I'm putting it off. But hey-ho. Oh, it's like opening a little sweetie. Oh, look. See, that is a handmade watercolour as it should look, isn't it? Filled perfectly to the brim. It's not cracked. It's not sunk in. It's it's firm. Ugh, oh, yeah. So then I'll take a little piece of my magnetic strip, I guess, to hold it, hold them into the tin. So I might even do that in a minute. And it's nice because I could choose just to take a few out. I could put some of these in instead, couldn't I? And just take them out um, like that. Yeah, so I could, yeah, I could make up my own little palette in here for this particular job. I might do that. <laughs> now, I ought to write on the bottom what these are called. So they're not labelled. So that is crystal silver. It'd be nice if that label, I wonder if it will, if it will stick on the bottom. Well, this is going to be a bit of a fiddle to do this, but I think it'll be worth it. Because if I wanted to get the paints again, I'll want to know what they are there. So I can just label it like that. I can still put a little piece of magnet on the bottom. There we go. Holds it in there. Lovely. Cut this bit out and come back to you when I've got them all labelled and stuff. I'm done. Look how cute. <laughs> um and then I can just put in whichever ones I want. So I'm going to swatch all of these now and then make myself up a little mini palette in there. It'd be really fun. Well, I might not have room because I've done that one in a big pan because I ran out of small pans. I'm the most curious of all about how this one's going to come out. So this is the chocolate green. They weren't chocolate mints. They were chocolate limes, the sweets that I'm thinking of. Chocolate limes. Ooh. that one I don't know if the camera will pick it up it looks so beautiful I wonder if I ought to spritz these just a little bit get them going oh it's so pretty I'm dying to see how they dry up as well just don't think the camera's gonna oh it is showing it pretty well actually that colour change thing. Beautiful. I should get a bit of dark paper to try these on as well. I'm very interested to see how they go on dark too. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Okay, so that's the chocolate green. This is golden copper. Oh, look. Wow. So pretty. Let's try that on the dark as well. Oh. It's really quite surprisingly opaque finish on the on the dark. 
tell you what make these are, but it's CSY Art Gallery. And this one's the red brown. Oh, they activate really quickly. They've got a lovely creaminess to them. So what happens if you wash them out? Absolutely stunning, these. I think they're the nicest metallic paints I've ever used. I wasn't expecting so much opacity from a, a watercolour. Okay, so this is the crystal silver one. It's not going to show so much on the white, obviously. Is that dry yet? I wonder if they'll paint over each other. That's sort of mixed to make it interesting. It doesn't, it's so shiny, it's not, the camera's not um, coping very well. They are beautiful. Oh, I didn't try the white pearl, the crystal silver, not white pearl. I don't know where that came from. Really, really lovely. I promise you they look even better in real life. I've got two more to try. So this one's gold pearl. I love how quickly they activate. Very impressive. That's lovely too. Oh, very impressed with these, very impressed indeed. Oh, <laughs> it's delicious, delicious darling. So this one is the Inca gold, so it's quite a reddish gold. They are absolutely stunning. So I just need to decide which will look the nicest now with my, I'm going to be using this one, this one, this one, and this one. I feel like maybe that would be kind of complimentary, wouldn't it? Initially, I thought I was going to be going with the crystal silver, but I think maybe I'm going to, I'm going to go for the, the two. I'm more likely to use the Inca gold for this. So, let's put my swatch pieces out the way. Let's put the box out of the way, I don't need that at the moment. Now somewhere I've got a lovely vintage tin, I just need to find out what safe place I've put it in because that would be good to put my own homemade watercolours in. And I've also got the ones that Dawn sent me too so they could go in there as well. Right, so I'm not using those, I'm using these and these. And I've got myself also a big fat brush. That's one of the things I've treated myself to on the day that um, Claire and I met up for the first time in real life down in Ely. Okay, so what I might do is um, two pieces at the same time so I can be leaving one to dry. So let's take two sheets out of here. And I think I'll mask off and I've got all sorts of cap all over the front of that one so let's use the other side, I don't think that's too much. So the um, prompt that Johnny gave me with the Uwe box this month was splatter. Yeah, splatter. So I'm just going to kind of um, drip and splatter around with these paints, really enjoy myself and then I'm going to doodle into them. That's my plan. So I hope that fits the prompt well enough, Johnny. <laughs> got my spritzy bottle I've got I've got uh, dirty water clean water I've got some salt to get some texture later hopefully I've got a couple of different sizes of brushes but for this bit this background I'm, I'm mostly going to be using the the big fat one the good old spritz first probably let's get started
Well, I have no idea what I'm doing here, but I'm having a lovely time. And that's the main thing. And I'm certainly doing some splattering, so... One more bit of salt. Right, now I'm going to set that one aside for a bit while I start on the other one. Um, I'm trying to do something a bit different with that one. And then, meanwhile, this one can be drying off and then I can brush off the salt and I probably will want another layer because undoubtedly these will dry up much paler than they look now, but we'll see. I need to go and change my water as well. Paint's all dried now on both these pieces. I gave it a bit of a blast with the hairdryer where the salt bits were because they were just taking ages. I just couldn't wait. So, <laughs> and that created some little extra interesting shapes. I've been watching a lot of what's she called Gabrielle, hang on a sec, Gabrielle Anacormia Art. I will put a link to her in the description box. Um, I love the way she does watercolour backgrounds and then does her version of neurographic kind of doodling into them um, so I've been very much inspired by that and I've also seen what um, Rachel brierton has been doing and um, she's been sharing some of them in our discord community um, I think she's been doing an online course and um, probably a bit like this one she started off with a watercolour background and then doodled doodled into it they've been so lovely so i kind of got those kind of things in my head but i don't know if i'm going to be able to produce anything like that we'll see while i was rubbing the salt off unfortunately i rubbed my back to the to the paper at that point so it doesn't actually damage the paper too much i suddenly remembered that i've also got so in the box that johnny sent me there are a couple of these magic sponge erasers where you can erase the watercolours and I did think it'd be quite fun to get a stencil and try erasing through the stencil so I might do a little bit of that on on the other one put that there to remind me I've also poured out um, a straw because I might do some splattering with that as well and this toothbrush is another way of creating a finer splatter than I did like doing that and then when I come to the doodling bit I've also got this so I can make dots and I got some pens so I went to the range and got myself this silver Signo Uniball Signo Broad <laughs> because Zoe, Zoe Hartist um, made a beautiful um, space 
scene with the moon and all these lovely, all these amazing um, kind of space symbols done in, a, uh, I think it was the gold one or the copper one of these and she said they've got them on they've got them on sale at the range and they've got three colours but the only one they had at my range was the silver one so I picked up another white at the same time and I've got a 0.8 fine liner and a 0.1 so I think that's what I'm going to be using mostly for my video but first I need to put a little bit more watercolour into this and I'll maybe grab a stencil to have a go with the magic sponge in a minute I will Put you back on speed through now. <laughs> ah, ah, something, something on the end of that straw tastes horrible. Dread to think I'll just put it in my mouth. Oh, that was so fun I really had to make myself stop I need to let that dry a bit more now before I brush the crumbs off because otherwise it's smudging the paint I'm quite uh, impressed with how well that works apparently you can rinse this out and use it again and again obviously it does wear away though this is the same stuff you can buy for cleaning marks off of walls and things I've used it for that um, yeah I don't know what it is but you know you, it comes off in your hands a little bit smells a bit weird it smells like some kind of weird glue or something I don't know but yeah that's a very interesting effect and um, I could try other stencils with that as well I have a little bit of a clean up now because the paints are going away for a minute and the pens are coming out um, but then I'm going to go back in with my metallic paints to add some details so I'm quite happy with that I need to let that dry and I'm quite happy with this one this is still moving around here so I need to just walk away from it for a little bit if I get my hair dryer on it's going to move and I don't want it to quite like that weird shape that it's made and uh, I like the how dark that is I've been quite impressed with how well the paints have held their colour as they've dried it's not gone that much paler as it's dried like you normally expect with watercolour so that's quite nice I do love this weird paints purple <laughs> I'm going to call it that
so I'm going to keep on doodling into this probably for a couple of hours now so I don't, I'm going to bother <laughs> recording it all I've done a little bit of everything I'm probably going to try I've tried out the luscious gold paint um, I will go around the outlines again there um, I'm a bit annoyed I think these vertical lines are too heavy so I'm going to try doing finer lines in between with the 0.1 pen instead I'm going to put more black around all of these st stones or pebbles I'm thinking of them as pebbles for some reason and I'm going to do that thing where like you do in urographic art where you round off all the angles where the lines intersect my pen isn't always liking going over the top of these pens so I'm having to every so often scribble it off on the scrap piece and then it's okay again see I'm going to fill in between all, all the little shapes and round off all the corners like that that'll take me a while as well I'm going to do some dotting with the white pen I love the silver signal board as well um, so yeah more of the same really and then I've still got this one to do when it's completely dry I'll do that perhaps in a slightly different way um, but yeah I'll come back and show you how they turn out when I finish doodling because this is going to be a couple of very happy hours <laughs> I need to get my head over it and see what I'm doing more than I can when I've got the when I've got the camera set up so I'll see you in a moment finished doodling I've had a lovely time <laughs> I ended up painting over that bit there because I just really didn't like those heavier black lines I should have used the finer pen like I've used there that would have been better but in the end I quite like this sort of white there it it breaks it all up a bit and I put some white bits in here to sort of balance up that could do with being whiter though that's better um, so yeah I think I'm done with them now and I'm ready to do the big old the big tape peel I'm pleased with how they came out I like the colour combination these uh, metallic paints are an absolute oh! just so lovely to use and I'm really happy with how my homemade ones turned out as well love those colours I love how vibrant they stayed when they dried I'll definitely um, use up the rest of the pigments I've got whether or not it's something I will really get into and bother buying some more pigments I don't know it's quite messy it's quite hard to get consistent results if you're too lazy to um, experiment and make records which <laughs> but it's been a really fun um, a fun little thing to do so oh, I've still got my headphones on because I've been listening to my audio but thanks again to Johnny for sending me this fun box it's something I had never tried before I really enjoyed it I know Johnny's had an a, um, injury to his elbow so he's not been able to do any arting and crafting over the last couple of weeks um, but hopefully he'll be up and running again soon fingers crossed um, and we'll be able to see how he's getting on with his weaving which is in the box that I sent him so I will leave um a link to Johnny below. I'll also put my link tree in there so from there you can find your way to the Arty Farty Annie group on Facebook and our new Discord community which is getting very busy um, and those are both both those places you can uh, come in, say hi, have a chat to everybody, uh, share your ideas, show us uh, pictures of what you've been making um, it's really nice to see what everybody else is up to and just to connect with each other and support each other like that so I'll leave a link to that and also to um, Gabrielle who was very much sort of inspired that kind of doodling that I've been doing today um, I think that's it, uh, thank you very much for Thank you very much for joining me today and I'll see you again really soon.